Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Little for PokerNews.com and today I have a hand from the $5,000 buy-in Seminole Hard Rock Poker Open from very, very early in day one. This is a uh, multi-entry tournament, multi-day tournament, and we're really deep stacked right off the bat. So let's get to it. We get Ace, King, Offsuit, Spades and Clubs in the cutoff seat. I'm definitely going to raise. Playing very deep stacked with a 100 small blind and 100 big blind. I'm going to make it about four big blinds pre-flop. My normal raise is to about three. I would actually prefer more like three and a half, but they don't have 50 chips in this, or 25 chips in this tournament. So uh, with the additional bit of money in the small blind, I just generally prefer going a touch bigger. So I like a four big blind pre-flop raise at this blind level with these stack depths. For all I know, maybe even like 500 or 600 is better. Um, that could certainly be the case. So anyway, I make it 400 and small blind and big blind both call. Flop comes ace, four, three, two hearts, and they check to me. So I have the best hand in this scenario almost every time. I'm really not worried about five, two. Obviously, either opponent could have five, two, right? I mean, the players at Hard Rock in Florida are loose and splashy. Uh, they're not afraid to stick around and see what they flop. But my hand's great. Also, I don't, I like, I want to get money in the pot against the other aces, right? If I do bet and get raised early in this tournament, I'm not folding. I realize that I could be drawing thin, but at the same time, I beat a lot of flush draws, I beat a lot of straight draws, and for all I know, my opponents may be the type of players who just check raise with top pair, like ace 10, because they think they have the best hand and they want to find out where they stand, right? So against players like that, I'm definitely just going to continuation bet and see what develops. So pot's 1,300. I bet 500 here. I think I'd prefer a bet of more like 800 just to get more money in the pot and also to price out the draws a little bit better. Because when I bet 500, I mean, I'm not really not making it too bad for my opponents to call with any two, any like backdoor flush draw with a backdoor straight draw, right? My opponents get to call pretty wide and I don't necessarily think I want that. So I think I'd prefer a slightly bigger bet of like 800. Turn is the Jack of Hearts. So I bet 500 on the flop, small blind call. Turn is the jack of hearts, small blind now checks again. So now I have to figure out if I want to continue betting because now I lose to a lot of hands, right? My opponent definitely could have a lot of flushes. However, if you think about the flush draws my opponent's likely to have in the small blind, a lot of those are normally the ace high flush draw, which he can't have because the ace is on the board. King high flush draw, but he can't have king jack. Queen high flush draw, can't have queen jack. Jack five flush draw, can't have those, right? And then just a few like 10, 9, 10, 8, 9, 8, 9, 7, 7, 6, 7, 6, 5, stuff like that, right? So there really aren't all that many combinations of flush draws compared to on a different board. Like say the board is instead ace of diamonds, jack of hearts, four of hearts, three of hearts. Now my opponent has a whole lot more flush combinations in their range because they have all the ace x of hearts, right? So this is a scenario where even though the board got you know, way worse for my hand. It didn't actually get all that much worse because it's rather difficult for the opponent to actually have a flush, which means if they're unlikely to have a flush, it means they're more likely to have a made hand or a straight draw. So the made hands are going to be hands like an ace, which ace jack got there, but that's it. For all I know, ace jack three bets preflop, right? It's hard to know. Um, so if my opponent doesn't have ace jack, I just have the best hand. And um, straight draws. Now, this is definitely a dicier scenario than on the flop because now if I bet the turn and get raised, I could just be drawing dead. And to be fair, if I do bet the turn and get raised, I am just going to fold. I know that seems a little bit nitty, but realize I also have a whole lot of other aces that would value bet that have a heart with them that can easily call. I also have some flushes that can easily call, and I also have some sets that can easily call and two pair, right? So when I am betting this turn, this is actually one of the weaker hands in my turn betting range because I either have... Like the king, like say I have king queen with the king of hearts. If I get raised, I'm going to stick around with it, right? Um, if I have ace jack, I'm going to call. If I have a set, I'm going to call. So this is actually one of the weaker hands. So given this is one of the weaker hands and it really lacks playability on the river, I think this is a fine spot to value bet with the intention of folding. So I do bet 1400 into 2300 and the opponent calls and the river is the king of spades and the opponent checks. So now again, we have to figure out, can we go for value? I think this is a situation that probably a lot of people mess up, especially if the river's not a king. If a river is instead, really any other card, 
I'm probably still just going to go ahead and make a small value bet, unless it's a heart, right? If a river's a heart, I'm not going to value bet. Any other river, I will value bet here. And the reason is because a lot of people just aren't raising in this situation because they're going to be raising into a nut hand sometimes, right? If I'm just sitting here with a flush, which I easily could have, it's just horribly bad for my opponent to raise. Also, I could just randomly have queen 10 here, right? Queen 10 may not fold to a raise. I could have a set here. Sets may or may not fold to a raise. Although, to be fair, they probably should. One thing you will find that most small and medium stakes, uh, it's the small and medium stakes cash game and tournament players, when they raise you on the river, they have almost no bluffs in their range. So if they have almost no bluffs in their range, you should probably be folding out almost everything. But uh, as long as your opponents don't properly check raise the river, you can get away with value betting relatively thin. And I'm not going to say top two pairs all that thin here, but like say the river was a nine or a six or a four, right? I, I'm definitely going to continue value betting in this scenario, and I think it's going to extract a pretty good amount of value. So when the opponent checks the river, I think I need to go for about a 2,000 bet, is what I was going to say, into the 5,000 pot, because I'm trying to get called by a marginal ace or perhaps a jack, like king of hearts jack. Well, I guess king of hearts jack, so I'm calling anything. Queen of hearts jack, right? Or maybe hand like king of hearts queen. And I think if I start going bigger, like let's say 4,000 into the 5,100 pot, my opponent's going to get to fold out some of those hands. So I think to really ensure we get called, I like a small bet size in this situation. And you may say, isn't it obvious when you bet small that you're just always trying to get called? Um, no, because I am going to bluff using that small size every once in a while. So this is definitely a situation where we're going to be well enough balanced where we have some bluffs and some value bets. And our value bets are, you know, reasonably strong hands. Do make sure that you don't get in the habit of always betting only marginal hands small or mostly marginal made hands small because then, well, if your opponents know you are somewhat capped at a non-flush hand, they get to raise you a lot, right? So be careful. You may actually say that, hey, if my opponents in my games usually make small value bets, mostly with marginal made hands, should I be raising them? Well, maybe you should be check raising them on the river. Question is, will they fold? Now, that's going to take some practice and some experience against your particular opponents to know if they are going to make um, you know, decently big folds with hands like ace-king in this spot. If they will, check-raise them out of their seat every single time you get to the river because they're going to be folding almost everything, right? So do not be afraid to get out of line and uh, get them. So anyway, in this scenario, I go 2,200 and the opponent just folds. So I don't know what he had. If I had to guess, probably just a weak ace is still fine now to fold. Maybe he had a hand like 6-5. But the problem is, is like, <laughs> what 6-5 are you really calling the turn with? Unless it's just like 6 of hearts, 5 of clubs. Um, maybe the opponent had a hand like king of hearts, or queen of hearts jack. That makes some sense. It's kind of hard to come up with too many hands that will fold to the small riverbed unless they did just make a snug fold on the river. But anyway, we win the pot and we extracted a little bit of turn value, which is always very nice. So that's going to be it for today for this hand for pokernews.com. If you want... The best poker news. If you want to go and learn about what is happening in the poker world, check out pokernews.com. They do a lot of great work, and thanks to Poker News for allowing me to make videos for them. Good luck in your games. Have fun, and I'll talk to you next time.